So I've been doing a lot of programming lately in a couple of languages, and uh, I don't know. I thought it would be interesting to just talk about Lua, which you can not only program with inside of uh, MAME, but it's also possible with FB Neo. I think that was made possible, you know, a while back. So you can totally do that. Um, so what is Lua? Lua is a programming language that's usually used in conjunction with other languages uh, for like additional features. So for instance, uh, for instance, if you ever go onto Fightcade, right, and you go into training mode, that's actually what's happening. Those are Lua scripts that are being run in order to accomplish certain things, right? So, stuff like, oh, give the characters infinite health or, you know, fucking display inputs, shit like that. Um, so, I thought it would be interesting to just go over the very, 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 very basics of Lua, how to make a script and run it in Fightcade or, you know, MAME or whatever. The process is much and such the same with MAME. You can just press Control L when the when the window is open in order to open a, a Lua window. It's actually quite simple. So okay, here's our example. In the game Street Fighter Free New Generation, by setting this address to the value 06, you can select Hugo. Right? I'm not sure why that value specifically. Uh, usually the character IDs are not like that, but anyway. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to load up New Generation, and we're going to make a script that does exactly that. So let's go over here. Lua scripting. We can either open the new... We can open a new script. Uh, for the sake of this example, we'll get rid of all of this. We're just going to focus on the basics of the basics right now. We need to get this done. So we'll save this as SF3 select Hugo. Because you can't normally do this. So we're going to force the game to let us do this. So how are we going to do this? Um, the most basic, basic way of getting it done is a couple of things. Uh, you have to dictate while true do. So this just executes all the time. And whatever is in here, emulator frame advance if I'm writing it correctly. So whatever is in between these two will automatically run, right? So in this case, we want to set the byte at this address to this, right? To six. So this is the actual address. And the way we would do that is, if I can just find this again, is we would say memory write byte open bracket, the address that we want to write to, so 0x, whatever the fuck, and then the actual value that we want to write into it, so 0x06. Assuming we didn't fuck it up, this should be it. That's all the script does. While true, write this value into this memory address. It should work now. Okay, it didn't crash. As we can see, we can now select Hugo. There he is! But asserting a value into memory isn't the only thing that it can do. It can also do stuff like display text. So for instance, uh, let's get rid of this. We don't, we don't need this anymore. We do two minuses in order to comment something out. So we can do something like GUI dot text. If I can write it correctly. GUI text. We have to give it an X position, so we'll say 20. A Y position, we'll also say 20. Now at this point, we can do one of two things. We can either format whatever we give it, like string format. We'll say uh, car select value equals, then we can write percentage, and then whatever we want to parse it as. And then, 
we can feed in what we want. Um, so, for instance, let's uh, let's say we want to constantly track the ID. Car select ID equals local. We can say memory read byte instead. So this returns whatever value is there. So read one byte of data at this address. So this constantly sets character select ID to whatever is here. So now we can go back here. We can say format it as this. So this percentage D, this actually means to format whatever is here. Format whatever is here in this way. So for instance, if you say D, that means a decimal. If you say F, it's a float. And in this case, we want it to be X, which is a hexadecimal value. So now, when we run the script, it shouldn't assert the Hugo value anymore and should instead just constantly display whatever the value is. So if we restart the game, yeah, see how it updates alongside our character select value. So let's say Ryu, he's two apparently, yeah, you can do stuff like that. Something that I do all the time is uh, I use macros, so for instance we can say RB equals memory read byte. So functionally, what this does is every time we say RB in isolation, it would be the same as saying memory read byte, right? So now that we've set that macro to mean this, right, we can go back here, and we can just say RB, and that should just work. There should be no difference whatsoever. And there isn't. So the sky's the limit when it comes to Lua. You can do stuff like display and debug a ton of data. You can force data to be things. Uh, you can format it a certain way. You can do a ton of stuff. Like for instance, um, I'm doing a reverse engineering project for Darkstalkers. And so I made this script for it. You don't really see much of anything just because, you know, you're not actually in a game. Ignore the weird colors. That's, that's intentional. But yeah, once we're actually in a game, it displays a ton of useful data. So, oh, where are the defense addresses of the character? Where to find the animation element? Like, what file it's in? So, this, so for instance, uh... If I wanted to find the data for the current frame for Dimitri, it would be in Animelum. F it would be in file four at offset seven D eight oh six. I could tell where the hurt boxes and push boxes are, and what files those are in, how much health I have right now, what the velocities are, formatted as floats. So you can actually put those in the Mugen, and they are just one to one. They are exactly the same. I could change the data mode, so instead of displaying Mugen, I could display the address values. So like, oh, uh, the sprite pointer is loaded at this address, right? Or the position is located there on the, vel veloci the velocity and all that. Uh, I could change it to the source, so it's just the raw hexadecimal values of everything. Yeah, very useful. I actually made a script kind of similar to this for the Marvel games. It's nowhere near as fully featured as the Darkstalkers one, mainly just because that one was specifically designed for Darkstalkers, whereas this one is a bit more general. But it does still give some useful information for all of the Marvel games. So you could still edit the animations and the velocities and all that jazz with them, you know? I think the one I'm most proud of, though, is I made an animation tester for Red Earth. So essentially, Red Earth is really weird. 
it has a base pointer to like all of the animation data of the character. Then it has another pointer that points to the animation group. And then it has another pointer that points to the actual physical animation data. Ignore the background, that's normal. So essentially the idea of this is you can cycle through the animations as well as each individual character and see what every single animation does. Including, but not limited to, if we just go a bit further down. I showed this in an earlier vid, if I could just find where it is. But Red Earth actually has a couple of unused animations. Yeah. And this isn't just limited to the characters. If you press E and R, you can cycle between the bosses as well. But yeah, Lou was pretty cool. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll try my best to answer them. But make no mistake, I'm not exactly a Lua expert. I just, I know enough to get shit done. You know what I mean? Anyway, have a good day. <laughs>